Good morning to you. Are we ready for 12.5? We're in the binomial theorem. Did you finish up, what was it, geometric, geometric sequences and series? We're going to do 12.5 today. It's the game plan. We're going to be due on Monday. Right. Well, x plus 2 to the fifth. Could you do it? Would it be easy? A little painful, huh? Right? Here, don't write this down, but, but I'll do it by hand. x plus 2 to the fifth, you know, means x plus 2, x plus 2, x plus 2, x plus 2, x plus 2. So it's a whole bunch of foils, huh? So I could like, I don't know, start at the back or the front, doesn't really matter. And you know I'd get x squared, can I just skip some steps? x squared plus 4x plus 2. And then maybe I could um, just leave these in the front here. It doesn't matter where you start. You know when you're multiplying five things together, it doesn't matter what order you do it in. Then I could do this one. Right, again, don't write this down. This is not the way we're going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to show you how painful this is, so we won't do it this way. But this is like motivation here. So 4x squared plus 2x, I'm going to run out of room, plus 2x squared plus 8x plus 4. Um, and then there's still the other 2x plus 2 sitting in the front. And then i got to gather like terms. Totally running out of room. Um, yeah, they go over here. And then this is going to be what? x cubed, uh, 4 and 2 is 6x squared, 10x. Plus, so I'm already getting tired. I don't want to do it anymore. All right, so you'd have to keep going. It's just getting terrible, right? And they're, just not, they're not going to just give us fifth. They're going to give us like eighth power, tenth power, fifteenth power, right? Real life, well, in the math world, in the science world, as you go up the line, real life, you have... All kinds of these things that you need to do at different times. You'll have what it's called, we're going to get to the binomial theorem. Bi meaning two, like a bicycle, has two wheels, right? It's basically a shortcut formula for how you do two things. In this case, we have an X and a two, but it could be any two things. It could be an A and a B. It can be a, a square root of 17X and a 4W to the seventh to a big power, like the 10th power, or the 20th power, or the 37th power, or something like that. When you have two things in a parenthesis to a big old honking big power, we would like a shortcut because we don't want to do all this, and I'm not even done, and that's only a fifth power. So those come up all the time in the math science world as you go forward. And so we need a shortcut formula, and that shortcut formula is called... The binomial theorem. It's for two things. So, with all that introduction of, of what not to do, let's let's figure out what you do do. So, I'm going to give you, um, you know, math is, is patterns, isn't it? It's just like totally patterns. That's it. So, I'm going to give you the pattern for the binomial theorem. I mean, I could give you the actual thing, but it would just, it would just look ugly. So, um, let me just give you the pattern. Here's, here's how you do it. Um, I've got to give you this thing first off, which I'll explain in a minute. You start with the 5, and you go 0, 1, 2, 3. I know that looks weird, like, what is that? But just write it down for now. It almost looks like a fraction, but there's no bar. That Those are not fractions. They're actual, uh, com it's, it means 5 choose 0. It's combinations. It's something I'll explain in a minute. So just write them for now. So you take whatever the power is, you take whatever the power, the power, <coughs> bless you, is 5, and you put it over 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to 5. So just like that. You do that first off, and I'll explain what those are and how to get them in a minute. And then next to that, you take the first item, you know, you're in the binomial, the two things you have in the parentheses, we have what, an x and a 2. So you grab whatever the first thing is, so the first item, x, and then you put the second item there, in this case it's a 2, and then you do something special with the power. You start with the highest power, and you do 0. In fact, it's just those numbers. 
And then you go four, three, two, one, none. And then vice versa, one, two, three, four, five. Everybody see what I'm doing there? So it's a pattern. I'm, I'm showing you the pattern that you always follow for the, this little shortcut formula, this quicker way to get, this is going to be a way to jump right to the final answer of doing all that foiling. That's what this is going to do for us. So everybody see the pattern first off. So you take, you take the power, put it in the top there, and go with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then you take the first number and the second number that are in your parentheses, the x and the 2. And you start with that highest power and go all the way down to 0, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And you start with the second number and start at 0 and go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that, those are them. Those are the answers. I just have to show you how to compute those now. So the main thing we need is what is this parenthesis 5 choose, I keep calling it choose, that's the name, 5 choose 0. What is that? Well, let me go over here. Um, 5, well, let me do one that's more normal. The 0 is a little weird. The 5 choose 0, or let's do 5 choose like 2. What that means is that means start at 5, do two numbers over the second number factorial. Or you could just do it on your calculator with the C button. I'll show you both ways. So first off, did you see what I did there? You start, you start at 5, do two numbers. Start at 5, do two numbers over two factorial. So that means 20 over 2 times 1, in other words, 10. 5 choose 2, for example, is 10. Let's do 5 choose 3. And then I'll show you on your calculator. 5 choose 3, you start at 5, do 3 numbers, going down. It's like a factorial where you go down, you know. Start at 5, do 3 numbers. Why 3 numbers? Because the bottom is a 3 there. Does everybody see that? You start at the top number, the top number is where you start. The bottom number is how many numbers you do. So start at 5, go down 3 numbers. 5, 4, 3. Over the bottom, factorial. Factorial means all the way down to 1, right? Remember what factorial means, that expla explanation point? It means multiply all the way down to 1. So that's going to be 5, 4, 3 over 3, 2, 1. Which is what? 3 cancels 3, 2 goes into 4, 2 times is 10 again. They're always 10. No, I'm kidding. They're not always 10. But those two were 10. Making sense? Now, you have a button on your calculator, which would be totally a good plan to use. It's called, it's the C. 5 parenthesis 2 is the same as 5 choose 2. It's on the, on the graphing calculator, if you have that, on the TI anyway, it's under the math button, I think. You've got to hit math, and then you've got to go all the way across to the probability menu. At least on the TI-84. So on the TI, so the 5 choose 2 on the TI-84 is under the math button. Then you've got to go over to probability. You've got to like, go over like four times, I think, or three times or something like that. Is that where it is? Am I, am I remembering that right? It's under, prob, it's under somebody have the TI? Mm -hmm. Is it? Is it it's under, the NCR. Yeah, it's the NCR. That's it, yeah. Is it, was that under the math button? Yeah. And wait for the right, yeah, okay. Yeah, so if you want to do that, send the math button way to the right, in CR, that's the, and then, but you've got to put the first number in, then do the C thing, then do the second number. So you've got to put the 5 in before you even go find the C. So you put in the 5, right, 5, choose 2, put in the 5, go find the C, then put in the 2, hit it. It'll do 5, choose 2 for you automatically and give you the 10. You all fine in that? Is that good? See, is it on the Casio? Oh, you don't have the graph yet. Yeah, it's on the little handheld ones too, though, right? You guys got it on the, find the C on the little handheld? Yeah, you can do it on the handheld. Well, I mean, they're all handheld, but I mean the smaller ones. All right. So, you getting that then? So, let's start cranking these out. Here we go. Five choose zero. Oh, I didn't tell you about zero. Anything choose zero is always one. That's the definition of choose zero. Because how, how do you start at five and write zero numbers? So, anyway, it's always one. Five, anything choose zero is always one. You could do it on your calculator. X to the fifth times two to the zero, which is also one. 
So that one's just going to be x to the fifth. Next term. I just multiplied those together. Did you track with me? 5 choose 0 was 1. 5 choose 0 was 1. x to the fifth, x to the fifth. 2 to the 0, anything to the 0 power, is also 1. So 1 times x to the fifth times 1 is x to the fifth. Good so far. Let's do the next one. 5 choose 1. You can do that on your calculator or by hand. 5 choose 1 means start at 5, do one number. Okay, I've got one number. Over this bottom number, factorial. One factorial is just 1. So it's just 5 over 1. It's just 5, isn't it? Is that too quick? Everybody make sense out of that? I just did five. You can do it on your calculator, or you can do it by hand. So again, five choose one means start at five, do one number over one over the bottom number factorial. So it's just five over one. It's just five times x to the fourth times two to the one, which is two. So that's what ten x to the fourth. So the second term in the answer to all the foiling, is 10x to the fourth. See how I'm coming up with these? Next, we're going to do 5 choose 2. We've already done it. We know it's 10 times x to the third times 2 squared, which is 4. So that's 40x to the third. That's the third term in the answer to all the foiling. That's what this binomial theorem is giving us. It's jumping to the final answer of foiling all these things five times. Questions so far? See how I'm doing that? Next one. Five choose three. Well, we already did that one right over here, and it's ten also. X squared. Two to the third? Two times two times two is eight. So 80x squared, there's the fourth term in the answer to all the foiling. Next one, 5 choose 4. Now we could figure that out. We could do 5 choose 4. But I would do better to show you the pattern. Math is patterns. That, that's the power of math and science. It's all patterns. Look at the pattern. 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. See that pattern? It'll always do that. It'll always repeat a pattern. It climbs and it falls. 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. It goes back down. Now, you can do it if you want. You know, 5, choose 4. I'll, I'll show you. It really is 5. You start at 5. Do four numbers, right? 5, 4, 3, 2. There's, there's starting at 5. Do four numbers over 4 factorial. 4, 3, 2, 1. See what happens? 4, 3, 2 cancels. 5 over 1, 5. Or you could use your calculator. But, it's, but once you've gone halfway, the terms just repeat the descending pattern. So you can save time. 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. x to the first, 2 to the fourth is what? 16. So that comes out 80. x to the first. This one is 1. x to the zero is 1. 2 to the fifth is 32. This is 32. So there we go. This is our answer. All added up. I, you should write it sideways, added up, but I don't have space. So those, those terms are the answer. So which of these answers is the right one? Let's look back here. It will not be multiple choice on the test. Uh, which one is that? Is it C? They're also similar. 40, yeah, that's it, huh? Yep, it is C. We good on so that's the final answer to foiling those five times, and just as easily you could foil them twenty times with this binomial. Well, not quite just as easy, but certainly easier than all the foiling. That's the purpose of the binomial theorem. Questions on that one? Okay, can I? Everybody got that copy down? And I will flash on to another one. Okay, let's try this one. Same thing, a little bit easier maybe, huh? Let's try that one. X minus 2 to the 
So, um, yeah. You need to... So what are we going to start out in the parentheses? What's the first term? Four choose zero, right? Four choose one, four choose two, four choose three, four choose four. Right, you start with a power with zero. Go all the way up. Now, let me help you guys. The first term is x. The second is negative 2. It's not regular 2, right? It's negative 2 in parentheses so that you do the right thing with the powers on the negative 2. All right, so and then we uh, so we just bring down these x minus two, x minus two, all the way down. And then put the powers. So remember you start with four. So start with the fourth power, third. Second, first, none, and then zero, one, two, three, four. Everybody tracking with the pattern? Is that good? Just a nice little pattern. So now we just got to crank out those terms. So what is 4 choose 0? What is anything choose 0? That's just always 1. x to the 4th, and any, anything to the 0 power is 1 as well, so the first term is x to the 4th. Second term, 4 choose 1. That's 4. Well, here, I'll do it over here in this. I don't know where I'll do it over here. 4 choose 1, you start at 4, only do one number over 1 factorial, so it's just 4, right? Or you can use your calculator. It's just 4. <coughs> times x to the 3rd, times negative 2 to the 1st, so negative 2, so what is that? Negative 8 x to the 3rd is our second term. Of course, they all have those first two terms. We're not eliminating any possibilities yet. Oh, that's a 5. You're right. My eyes couldn't hardly see that. Yeah, D's out. All right. We keep going. Third term. 4 choose 2. Now, what's that? 4 choose 2 means start at 4, do 2 numbers. Right? Start at 4, do 2 numbers. Remember that bottom number, the 2, tells you how many numbers to do. You start at 4, do 2 numbers, over 2 all the way down to 1, 2 factorial. So what's that? 12 over 2, 6? So that's 6, x squared, and negative 2 squared is 4, so that's 24x squared. Good so far. Next one, well, do you see the pattern? We're halfway. Once you're halfway, it starts to descend. So now there's, if you have an even amount of terms, you have two repeats in the middle. If you have an odd amount of terms, you don't. So this is going to go 4, 1. It's not going to do another 6. On the last one, if you look back, we had, an, we had 6 terms. We had an even amount of terms, so you had two tens in the middle. When you have an even amount of terms. If you have an odd amount of terms... You just get the 6 in the middle, and then it goes back down. So x to the first, this will be minus 8. So what is that? Minus 32x. 
Last one, 1 times 1, x to the 0 is 1, times 16, that's just 16. So there it is, which one is it? Is it B? Must, it's looking like B to me, is that right? Yeah, it looks right. Anyway, there's not, it's not multiple choice in the test, so whatever. There it is. That makes sense how I did that. Questions on that? Anything I can answer on that? The other way to do this is Pascal's triangle. Have you heard of Pascal's triangle? Right? You can do that way if you prefer. Um, so I have room to squeeze in Pascal's triangle somewhere. Pascal's triangle basically says you start with a 1, you do 1s here, and you just keep doing 1s on the outside like this, just like a, a triangle, a pyramid of 1s, okay? And then, getting wider and wider, and then in between, you add the numbers to get the total between them. So 1 plus 1 is 2. See that 1 and 1 added to be 2? Okay, and now this 1 and this 2 will add to be 3. This 2 and this 1 will add to be 3. Did you see that? Whenever you go down a layer and there's numbers on either side, they add down. Okay, and then 1 and 3 will make 4. 3 and 3 will make 6. 3 and 1 will make 4. Do you see that? Now, what's so special about it? You keep going and going and going. What's so special about those numbers? Well, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. So Pascal's triangle is a way to get all the coefficients. Now it's not it's not the final numbers, is it? It's not the final column answers, but it's the it's the choose numbers. It's the four choose zero, four choose one, four choose two, right? So this this is when you have second power. This is when you have third power. This is when you have fourth power. We have fourth power, right? So you can use Pascal's triangle as well on that. So, there we go. Is that good? Yeah. Questions on that? Make sense? All right. Let's try. Um, so that would be very similar, probably. Let's do something more interesting. There's a six. Yeah, let's do that one. Okay. So we'll go on to this one. Number, question number four here. X to the sixth plus Y to the seventh, all to the sixth power. Bigger now. Or maybe, wait, hold on. Maybe do they have a negative? We just don't have time to do. Well, maybe we better. Do. Okay, then we'll get to that one next. All right, we'll do two more of this. Let's try this. All right. X to the sixth plus y to the seventh, all to the sixth. Power. So start with your pattern. It's all about patterns. So we'll start up here. 6 choose 0, right? You start with the power, right? You start with the power and the 0. So 6 choose 0, 6 choose 1, 6 choose 2, 6 choose 3, 6 choose 4, 6 choose 5, 6 choose 6. Right? Or you can do Pascal's thing. Start with the 1. You want to write Pascal's triangle right on your 3x5 card? You could do that. Did I go far enough? So this is second power, right? This is the first, first line, second line, third line, fourth line, fifth line, sixth line. Yeah, so there's six power. So there's going to be the coefficients, huh? Yeah, that might be easier. Whichever way you want. Right? See, first, second, and we're sixth power. There, there's the coefficients for path for this. Those are going to be our coefficients. Those are going to be the six zero six one six the six two zero six two one, etc. Now this is going to be x to the sixth, and what's the second one? Y to the seventh to some other powers, right? You with me? So because it's a binomial, a two-termer, the first one is x to the sixth. The second one is y to the seventh. 
to some other power. So we got to put other powers on each of these according to the pattern. All right, so what's the pattern? Pattern is you start with six, you start with whatever your power, then go five, four, three, two, one, zero. On the other one, you start zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the coefficients in front, as we've already said, are going to be 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, and 1. Yeah, just the front, because, yeah, good question. Um, everybody hear the question? That's a good question. When uh, we have, like, a number, think, of, think about multiplying for a second. When you multiply things, you don't distribute, huh? So that's really the question. We don't, we, when I would never multiply 2 times 3 times 4 by going to both, would I? I would just go 2 times 3 is 6, times 4 is 24, huh? Yeah, so distribution, you'd only go to both if you had adding or subtracting in the middle. That's a good question. Yeah, so those numbers in the front, yeah, you just... We're just going to leave them there in the front. This is going to be x to the 24y to the 14. x Powers multiply powers, right? x to the 12y to the 28. x to the 6y to the 35. x to the 0, that's just 1, y to the 42. There we go. There's the terms. We didn't have any numbers to multiply with in the backs this time because it was both letters in our binomial, huh? X and Y. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Anything I can say to help? Questions? Comments on that? Just see the pattern. So we, we just take whatever the power is, in this case the sixth power, we start at six, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? And I did Pascal's triangle if you want to get these coefficients, or you could just use your calculator or you could do them by hand. And I got these coefficients in the front. And then for the x and the y, I just put the x to the 6, y to the 7th, x to the 6, y to the 7th, all the way down. And then I put the powers on them. I start at 6. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And then reverse it. Start at 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And let powers multiply powers. Questions? Try one more. How about is that a good? Or what's what's the hardest one here? Um, that's the same. That's not any harder. Okay, that's about it. So let's just do this one. This will be a good one. Let's do number five here. Oh, we're doing a sixth power again. So it's not going to be a lot different. Oh, but a root's a little messy. So you already know the coefficients, right? It's going to be the same coefficients as last time because it's Pascal's triangle sixth power again. 
start at 6. 6 choose 0, 6 choose 1, 6 choose 2, 6 choose 3, 6 choose 4, 6 choose 5, and 6 choose 6. I'll do the little Pascal thing. With the 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. This is what? First, second. Oh no, I'm off by line, aren't I? This one is second. Yeah, it doesn't start at the very top one, does it? It does not start at the very top one. First, second, third, fourth, fifth. So I need one more. One, six, fifteen, twenty, fifteen, six, one. There we go. So there's the six. There's the coefficients. And then what are our two things? We have the square root of x and negative, careful, remember that negative, negative the square root of 3. Those are our two terms, our binomial terms, two terms. that, and then we put in the powers, right? Start at 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, whoops, I'm messing that one up there, 3, 2, 1, 0, start at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Good to there so far? Follow the pattern. Good. All right, now we can do those roots, huh? Well, so we got the coefficients first off. Those are the 1, 6 from Pascal's triangle over there. 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, 1. Okay, and then we've got to do the roots. Now, what is the root of x to the 6th power? How, are you, how comfortable are you with roots? Remember all that kind of stuff? So the root of x six times. Yeah. Every two roots make a normal x, huh? So that's x, x, x. It's x cubed. We good there? And then what, and anything to zero power is one. So that's just, that, that term's just going to be x, plain old x cubed, huh? One times x cubed times one. Good so far? Root of x to the 6th power is x cubed. Okay, now what about root of x to the 5th power? Well, you've only got 5 of them now. So that, that last root, so the first one becomes a plane, the first two root x's become a plane x. The next two root x's become a plane x. But the, but the fifth one just has to stay as it is because there's not two of them. So it ends up being x squared root x. That makes sense. Or, or do, yeah, is that how they write? Yeah, that's how they write it. So I, you could also write it as five halves. That's the same thing. On a test, I would be fine either way. But yeah, it looks like they're writing x squared root x, so I'll do that too. Times minus root 3. 
my on the screen. I'm, I don't have much more room to do anything different there. I guess I could erase this. So if I want to kind of clean that up, maybe I'll put the final answers over here. Kind of clean it up. This first one's x cubed. The second one then, putting it all together, 6 times minus root 3 is minus 6 root 3 x squared root x. Or actually, they put the 3 and the x together in the root. Whatever. It doesn't matter. There's a million ways to write it. Whatever. I'm just going to leave it this way. However, it's fine. Is this making sense so far? We good? All right. So, yeah, I guess maybe, I, maybe they're right. Maybe I should put those together. Whatever. It does. I wouldn't care on a test. So, minus 6x squared root 3x. I guess we put the two root things together. It's probably the cleanest. All right, next, um, root x to the fourth. What's that going to be? Yeah, everybody see that's just x squared? Because root x to the fourth is just, you know, four root x's. Two root x's is, one, is a plain x. Another two root x's is a plain x. So that's x squared, huh? And then root three squared, negative root three squared. That means negative root three times negative root three. Just like two root x's make a plain x, two root threes make a plain three. Positive, because two negatives make positive. Plain three. Is that good? Because it's root of nine, if that helps, right? You can multiply three times three is nine. It's the root of nine, which is plain three, is another way of seeing that. So 15 times three, this is 45 x squared, that term is, huh? We good? Okay, and then next, so is it okay if I just speed them up then? So next, root x cubed, that's going to be plain x with an extra root x, right? Because two of them make a plane, and there's the extra one. Minus root 3, so, so minus, so we got minus root 3, Minus root 3, minus, again, two root 3s make a plain 3, and then there's the other one. And it's negative because there's three minus signs, huh? So it's going to be negative 3 root 3. Is that on the screen? Barely. All right. Negative 3 root 3 out there. Multiplying all that together, I don't know what you get. 20 times 3 is negative 60. Negative 60 x, and then root 3 x. Is that what's left there? Yeah, looks right, huh? Good? And then the next one, root x squared is plain x. Root 3 to the 4th, now we have 4 root 3s, negative root 3s. Well, first off, it's going to be positive because 4 negative signs is positive. 2 root 3s make a plain 3, another 2 root 3s make a plain 3. 3 times 3 is 9. Positive 9. <coughs> Positive 9. So that's 9 times 15. What is 9 times 15? 90, 45, 135? Thank you. 135. So 135x. Plain old x. All right, we're almost there. Root x. And then minus root 3 to the fifth. Well, you know, it's going to be 9 with an extra root 3. And it's going to be negative, huh? So that's going to be something big. We're kind of running out of room here. Well, I didn't write this one anywhere, did I? Oh, I erased it, I guess. 135. X, and this one is minus 54, 6 times 9, 54, root 3x. Yeah, right? We good to there? Finally, anything to the zero power is one. Minus root three to the sixth. Three times three times three, 20. So positive, even amount of negative signs. And it's really going to be three threes, huh? Because every two roots of three make a plain three. So plain three, plain three, plain three, multiplied 27. So it's just 27. There we go.
That's as bad as it's going to get, I think. We good there? All right. I'm going to flash over. I need to check something. Last thing they're going to do now is they're going to... is they're going to give you a question like this. So same kind of thing, binomial theorem, blah, blah, blah. But instead of wanting the whole thing, they're going to say, look, look, we're not going to make you do the whole thing. Just tell us what is the coefficient. Coefficient means like copilot, means the number, co means with. So the number with the x to the 7. Tell us the number next to x to the 7. That's what they're saying. They're saying, hey, what's the number that's going to be next to x? If you did this whole thing out, just give us the number next to x to the 7th. I'm going to do this on the test. You can practice exams. It's been available since day one. It's out there. You can see practice exam number four. I'll give you one regular on the test we take, whenever that is. Uh, next, is it next week? No. No. <laughs> you're like, no. You sure? Yeah, you're right. We've got to do trigonometry first. Yeah, this is it. This is the end. We start trigonometry next week. It's trigonometry from here on out. Um, this is the end of the non-trig material. Might be good news. You've done trick before, huh? We're gonna review trick. So anyway, um, so this is the end of the. From here on out, it's trick. So um, so the test is in two weeks. So anyway, um, I'll give you one where I say give me the whole expansion, like we just did the last four or five problems, and then I'll give you one where I say hey, just jump to this term for me. So one of each type. So how do we just jump to a term? Well, let's just start the process and see what kind of happens. It's all about pattern. What power do we have here? Ninth power. So I'm going to start with 9. 9 choose 0, 9 choose 1, 9 choose 2, 9 choose 3, 9 choose 4, 9 choose 5. I'm running out of room. Maybe that's far enough. I don't know. Let's see. What would be the um, numbers that go next to it? Well, it would be 2x and negative 1. 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 2x and negative 1, 2x and negative 1. And what are the powers that go on them? You start with the 9, then the 8, then the 7, then the 6, then the 5, then the 4, then the 3, etc. The other one starts at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. Now, can you tell which one is the one they want? So I don't want to do the whole thing. I just want to do the one they want. They want the one with x to the 7th. There it is. They just want that one, huh? Does that make sense? So I just start the pattern like normal. Just do enough of the pattern until I find the one they want me to get my hands on. Grab that one and figure out just that one. That one's going to come out x to the seventh, isn't it? When you multiply everything out on that term. He'll be the x to the seventh term, won't he? So let's grab just him. Bring it over here and say, okay, they want the 9 choose 2. 2x, the whole thing to the 7th, and minus 1 to the 2nd. That's going to be the x to the 7th term. All right, what does 9 choose 2? Start at 9, do two numbers over 2 all the way down to 1, which is something... 36? 36. Two, now, 2 to the 7th, 128 x to the 7th, and this is minus 1 squared, positive 1. So it's 36 times... 128, whatever that may be. I have no idea. 4608. 4608? Thank you. 4608, x to the 7th. There's the number they want. 4608. They wanted the number next to x to the 7th. We're done. Did you see how we did that? So I just started the pattern. They wanted x to the 7th, grabbed it. Did the, you can use the 9 choose 2 in your calculator if you want. You can do Pascal's triangle. I do a lot of work on these. It's easier just to do the by hand or, Pascal, or uh, calculator. And 2 to the 7th is 128. And then multiply those together times 1 if the back doesn't do anything. 4608. That good? All right. Let's try this one. So they want us to find the fourth term. Now they're doing it a little different. Instead of saying, find whatever goes with x to the seventh or whatever, they're saying, hey, just find the fourth term for us. Fourth term. So you have to start the pattern again, right? So go ahead and just start the pattern and just give them the fourth term only. 
They want the entire fourth term from foiling x minus 3 eight times. They wanted to give them the fourth term. So they use the binomial theorem to jump to the answer just the fourth term. Here's the fourth term, huh? A choose zero. Start with the power. A choose zero, A choose one, A choose two, A choose three is actually the fourth term, isn't it? And then it's going to be x and minus three. X and minus three. X and minus three. X and minus three. And put the powers on them. Start with the eight, seven, six, five. Start with the zero, one, two, three. So there it is. There's the fourth term. See how I found that with the pattern? And so that is so eight choose three. X to the fifth minus 3 to the third. So 8 choose 3 started 8, do 3 numbers over 3 all the way down to 1. Well, 3 times 2 is 6, cancels out. That's 56. You can just calculate it also. X to the fifth minus 27, right? Minus 3 times minus 3 times minus 3. So it is going to be negative something big. 1,000 something. 15, 12. Negative 15, 12, x to the fifth. They want the whole thing, including the x to the fifth this time. Because they didn't just ask us for the copilot, the coefficient. They said, give me the whole term. So that is the whole entire fourth term in the expansion. Right?